Hello, students of science. Let's talk about Isaac Newton and his first law of motion. Central question, what is inertia and how does it relate to mass? So while you're writing that down, I have a couple little examples I like to show this guy here doing that cool little stunt bike there. That is because that is a body at motion and it wants to remain in motion. And here, of course, is a slightly larger version. Um, in case it wasn't obvious, don't try either one of these at home. But an object in motion wanted to remain in motion. Okay, so you don't need to write this, this is in parentheses. But as Isaac Newton wrote in his Principia Mathematica, every material object continues in its state of rest or of uniform motion in a straight line unless it is compelled to change that state by forces impressed upon it. Another way you can state it, also don't write it, objects keep on doing what they're doing. A body at rest remains at rest. A body in motion continues to move. The way I like to write it is the law of inertia. This I want you to write down. This means that things don't want to change. A stationary object doesn't want to move. You know, imagine this sumo wrestler. If he doesn't want to move, and that's you, you're not going to move him. On the flip side, imagine if he was uh, moving, running straight at you. That moving object wants to keep moving in the same direction. Good luck stopping him. He has a lot of mass, therefore he has a lot of inertia. Whatever his body is doing, it's going to want to continue to do. So a couple examples here. You, here you can see a dog that badly miscalculated going off the dot there. He did not account for Newton's first law. You know, an object in motion wants to stay in motion. Stupid dog not knowing Newton's laws. Here you can see another example of a motorcycle crash. He's not flying. He's just obeying Newton's first law, an object in motion remaining in motion. So if he was going 60 miles an hour when that motorcycle crashed, guess what? He's continuing to go 60 miles an hour. This is why you always wear helmets and don't motorcycle race. That just seems like a bad idea. So another way to restate this, and you don't need to write this, an object wants to continue doing whatever it's doing unless something forces it to change. So in this case right here, this is, of course, you know, a car going, and he was going at the same rate through that as he was at the beginning. This is why you fasten your seatbelt and buckle up. It's the law of inertia. <laughs> okay, I'll stop. All right, let's talk about mass, which is kind of the same thing as inertia. Mass is the measure of inertia of an object. So when we're talking about the mass, we might say, oh, it's 10 kilograms. That's not only its mass, that's also its inertia. The more mass an object has, the harder it is to move it or stop it. So imagine we have two buckets. One is filled with sand and one is empty. The one filled with sand is more difficult to be pushed. It also is going to be more difficult to stop. If you've ever pushed a child on a swing and lost track of them and like, bam, got smacked by them, you know they were hard to get going, but they were also hard to stop. Now mass and weight are very different things. We kind of think of them as interchangeably, but your weight can change due to gravity. You can be weightless in orbit, but you're never massless. So if you want to lose weight, an easy way is just, you know, go to the moon. Just uh, like go into orbit where you're in perpetual free fall. You want to lose mass? Sorry, you got to go on a diet or like amputate a leg or two or a few limbs. Either way, you can't be massless. You can be weightless because remember, that's dependent upon gravity and gravity can change. Here you can see we have a train which has a lot of mass, therefore a lot of inertia. And then we have this car here, which uh, does not have as much. And you'll notice as this train comes, uh, and by the way, this is why you don't try to, you know, like beat a train across there. This train, look at how much it slows down. In case you're wondering, it doesn't seem to be slowing down. You're right. It's not slowing down. It has a lot of mass, a lot of inertia. An object in motion? wants to remain in motion. So let's think about pushing a car. You know, everyone's had to do that. We're pushing a car with it. Would that be easier on the moon? And the answer to that is actually surprisingly no. Like, let's say, you know, you didn't have to worry about all the breathing. The car has the same mass, even if the weight is lighter. Even if you could, in theory, pick that car up almost, you're still going to have a hard time getting it going. It's on the amount of mass. And once it's going, of course, it's going to keep on going. And here we see Newton's law in motion, where this guy didn't account for it. Once again, not so bright. Remember, relative to the car, he was not moving. And when he landed in that car, and he landed perfectly right there, he did not account for the fact that he was at rest and the car was in motion. He remained at rest, and that's why he tumbled out of the back.